Hey, welcome back to K-12 Analytics Engineering. I am Marcos Alcozer, and in this video, I am going to be demoing a workflow that I created to extract data from the EdFi API to create the analytics middle tier in Google BigQuery. I'll be walking through kind of how it's laid out overall, and then be diving in and actually showing you how it works through a demo. The code is shared online via my GitHub and will be on EdFi Exchange short, shortly, and so you can access the code and run it in your local environment as well. Okay, so let's look big picture at what we're doing here. So we are using Dagster to actually orchestrate the data workflow to retrieve data from a set of EdFi API endpoints, move that data into Google BigQuery, and then transform that data into the analytics middle tier. Now I have not built out the whole analytics middle tier just yet. I put a focus on the chronic absenteeism use case. So I have most of the core tables, I have the attendance fact, and I have the row level security ones built out. Now let's look a level deeper at the Dagster piece. Now Dagster has been really interesting to me. Dagster is a data orchestration platform and it's free and open source. So if you're familiar with Airflow, Airflow is a workflow orchestration platform. Well, Dagster says that what they really care about is orchestrating data workflows. Now Dagster jobs are written in Python and what this job is going to do is it's going to extract data from the EdFi API, which comes in the form of JSON, and it's gonna store that data as JSON files in Google Cloud Storage. From there, Dagster is gonna run dbt, and dbt is going to use BigQuery to query those JSON files in blob storage and create native BigQuery tables that match the EdFi API. After it does that, it's then gonna query those EdFi API tables, and it's going to create the analytics middle tier dimension and fact tables. Let's look a level deeper now. And here's that dbt uh, workflow visualized. So querying the external JSON to create the EdFi API tables, and then create the analytics middle tier dimension and fact tables. Okay, so let's just dive in and let's look and watch this thing run. Here we're looking at GitHub. This is linked in the show notes. Uh, you can access this today and you can run this on your local development environment. This code is designed to be opened in Visual Studio Code with Docker Desktop installed and a specific Visual Studio Code extension installed called Containers. And it, I created it this way because Visual Studio Code allows you to create a folder called a dev container, drop a Docker file in there, and then lay out all of your Python requirements. And what Visual Studio Code will actually do is it will open up the repo in its own container with all of the dependencies installed. And I really like developing that way because on my actual Windows PC or my Mac laptop, I don't have things like Python installed. Rather, I open each repo in its own container with its own dependencies. So in the readme file, it will walk you through the steps to actually set this thing up. If you do uh, set this up, feel free to reach out. I'd love to work with you to get that thing running. But there's a command called Daggett, and this Daggett command runs the Dagster UI, and we can see a graph for the job. So we have a git data step, which retrieves data from the EdFi API, and if we switch over to Launchpad, here are the various API endpoints we are going to pull data from things like calendar dates, courses, course offerings, et cetera. And you can see there's a bunch here. And if we go back over to overview, after we get the data, we're gonna load the data and that's uh, creating the JSON files in Google Cloud Storage. And then we're gonna run our dbt models. So let's click launch pad and let's click launch run. There are a few really cool views inside of Daggett. We're gonna start here in this waterfall view where you get this real-time view as the job is progressing and so we have get data that's running first and it's highlighting green when it finishes and on the right side you see that i have five executing at a time and then the rest are being queued up dagster actually is retrieving data from five endpoints in parallel and when one finishes and it moves on to the next one and you can tweak the code you can run 10 in parallel uh, you can run as many as you want uh, I took off the limit once and it, it ran just fine. It really depends on your computer and what it can handle. 
If I switch over to this view, you can see that after getting the data, it then loads the data. And so it's running through that, and at the end, it will run the DBT models. So let's jump over to Google Cloud Storage, where I have a bucket that the job is configured to use with an EdFi API folder. And I have here a folder per API endpoint. So here we have calendar dates again, and I have my JSON file. So that is stored there. And then if I go back and I go to BigQuery, there are three data sets we are going to look at. And we are going to start with dev raw sources. The purpose of this data set is to have external tables. These are tables that do not actually store any data themselves, uh, but they are the mechanism for how you query the JSON files that are in Google Cloud Storage. And we see that here with our source URI is the Google Cloud Storage path. And then there's a wildcard. So if there were multiple JSON files, it would query all of them. So dbt runs SQL on these raw sources to create the edfi tables. And if I jump over to my code repo and I look inside of the dbt folder and I go under models and I go under edfi, we can see, for example, some SQL here that dbt is going to run. And when it runs it then, in the EdFi dataset, under calendar dates, I now have more columns. These should look familiar if you're familiar with the endpoint, and I can preview the data. And so now I have the data here in a native BigQuery table that is representing the EdFi API endpoint. After it creates that, then dbt runs models here. So back in my code under the analytics middle tier, I've got things like my chronic absenteeism attendance fact, and I have the SQL here to be able to produce that fact table. And that's quite a lot there. You don't really have to worry about it when you first run this. You'll have the analytics middle tier. You'll have the tables under. And so if I go to something like student school dim, I put descriptions for some of the columns and I'll keep adding to them. Under details, I'll have the description of what that dimension is surfacing. And then if I look at things like the date dim, I can preview it here. And so that's the whole ELT workflow for extracting data from the EdFi API and creating the analytics middle tier tables. You can then, of course, write SQL on that and create the reports you want, such as a chronic absenteeism uh, dashboard. And that's just a quick demo of this workflow. If you are interested in trying this out, uh, please dig into the GitHub repo, read that readme file. It will walk you through how to configure your local development environment and your Google Cloud to run this. I've only documented the local development environment. I have run this in a production environment and it's worked really well. And I'll document the production side uh, if there's interest. That has been a lot of fun on the Google Cloud part uh, because I run it on a VM that's only turned on at night. And so it ends up costing under $10 a month to be able to refresh the data uh, in BigQuery for you.